everyone, my name is Michelle and this is my channel Sewing Bunny. Welcome to today's video which is my February sew along. If you'd seen my February sewing plans you would have seen that I put a few garments that I wanted to sew up to the vote and you guys picked the new look 6407 shirt as the one you'd like to see. Now today I'm going to be making this version, version A, which is a uh, longer sleeve version here and Bedley's come to help. <laughs> I got him all settled in his little bed over there and then uh, as soon as I start talking. Anyway we'll carry on. Um, right so I'm going to start off by finding out what size I want. So I'm going to have a look at the back of the pattern envelope which gives you all the sizing. Now this starts off with uh, sizes uh, 10 to 22. Now that equates to a bust of uh, smallest 32 and a half, a waist of 25 and hips of 34 and a half. And the 22 is a bust of 44, waist of 37 and hips of 46. So I'm a 36 bust, a 30 waist and a 40 hip. So according to these measurements here, um, a bust of 36 uh, falls into a size 14, but then to um, have my waist and hips, I would need to grade up to a 16 because that does cater then for a 30 waist and a 40 hip. Now, I do know that sometimes with these patterns, um, there can be quite a lot of excess ease in some of them. Not all of them, um, but some of them do. Now on the back, it doesn't have any finished garment measurements and that is what I usually go by. Now, especially for a shirt, I mean, this isn't exactly an ultra fitted shirt, but I don't want there to be a ridiculous amount of ease and I don't want to size down just in case there isn't actually that much ease. I'm thinking I'll probably want maybe around two inches of ease maybe around the bust just to give it you know a little bit of movement um possibly maybe similar around the waist so i'm gonna have a look uh, sometimes on the inside these um pattern sheets do actually tell you what the finished garment measurements are so i'm gonna open these up and have a look and see what i can find and so then i know what size to make so um yeah i'll just open this out Okay, so I've laid out all of the tissue paper and I can't find any finished garment measurements for a waist or a hip. I can find the bust, but not waist or hip anywhere. So I'm just gonna have to probably go by my bust and also probably what the pattern suggests. So I have found a size 14, the finished bust on there is a 40 inch. Now, I did say that I was thinking about two inches worth of ease, but actually that's for if you want something quite fitted. And obviously, as I said before, this is actually quite loose. So I think actually the size 14 will be absolutely fine. So I'm going to go off the um, measurements on the back and um, do a 14 at the bust and grade out to a 16 on the waist and the hips. Now the um, pattern pieces, they're not kind of like fully nested. So you don't have all of your um, sizes, you know, kind of 10 to 22 on one piece. So I've got the front piece here, which is a 10 and a 14. And then I've got another front piece down here, which is for the 16 and the size 22. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to trace out the size 14 and then lay that um, traced part over the size 16 and then trace out further from that, or vice versa, you could do the 16 and then put it on top of the 14. Um, but I will probably show you that bit when I come to it. So I'm going to get uh, tracing out all of the pattern pieces and I'll come back to you once I've done that. Okay, so this is the piece that I was talking to you about. This is where we've got a size 10, and a size 14 nested. And the size 16 piece, which I need for my waist and hips, is on a different section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my tracing paper and I'm gonna trace all around the size 14. And then what I'm gonna do is go to the size 16 piece, lay it over the top and grade. So I will show you that. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit confused 
So I've traced out my size 14 and underneath now is the size 16 piece. Now I've lined it up, if you can see here, so the notches match, you can see that the uh, fold line matches. So we've got all this matching here. So I would think then that the 16, because I'm gonna be doing the waist and hips, this is where I would be grading out because it this is the waistline that I've marked here. And so I would think, okay, I need to start grading out then from around about here. But I don't know if you can see, but the size 16 waist, you see here, that's the 16. It follows the exact same line as the size 14. So it's the same. So I'm a bit confused there because I don't understand what's the point of having a size 14 and a size 16 that follows the same waist and kind of hip area. I don't know, maybe I'm missing something, but the size 14 piece sits exactly where the size 16 kind of waist is. It's definitely different because you can tell here uh, the size 16 dart is in a slightly different position. And you can see here that the size 16 follows a different line up here as well. So yeah, I'm a bit puzzled on that, but hey ho, it matches. So I'm gonna go and uh, continue tracing the rest of the pattern. Mystery solved, the size difference is on the back piece. <laughs> so I just thought, oh, I'll trace out the back piece and see if it's any different. And yes, this one is different. This is where the size 16 is here. And this is my 14 piece. So you can see here, I've lined it all up along the bottom there. So there the waistline matches. And it is actually here where you can see that it is different. So there you go. I actually thought it would be both pieces that um, you'd need to amend, but it seems to be just the back piece in this one. So what I'm gonna do is, as I said, this is the waistline. So what I wanna do is I want to make sure that at that point, I am at this size 16. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a gradual curve from here out to the 16 and then carry on going around there for the 16 and then scribble this line out. So I'll do that just now. It's a bit difficult me showing whilst I'm holding the camera. But what I've done is I've lined up a ruler with the waistline so that then I know that I need to make sure that I'm reaching the size 16 at this point. So all I'm going to do is just make a little marking with my biro so it's a bit lighter than this, uh, this thicker line. And then what I'm going to do is do a gradual grade out so I'm probably gonna do something similar to this here. So I'll try and do it that I can hold the, uh, the paper with my other hand and then I'll show you. So you can probably see here, I've done a few little markings. I tend to kind of sketch it a little bit. So I kind of sketch where I wanna go, do a few lines, kind of see how I want it to grade. So I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is start from here, follow this sort of line and grade out that way. So I'm gonna do that now. So there we go. Now I've filled it in properly, followed the size 16 line all the way around until it meets up with um, the rest of the bottom of the shirt. And then I've scribbled out all of this so that I know which one I'm going to. And you can see here I've made an additional um, notch because this is where the size 14 notch is. This is where the size uh, 16 notch is. But as I say, the waistline is here. So I didn't want to um, obviously move the line any further up there. So the reason why I've graded out slightly further up is because I need it to be able to reach this point of my waist and be able to fit there. So I know that as soon as it comes away from my bust and starts going to my waist, I want to have 
that smooth line. Now, you might find that you do it slightly differently. You might want to grade slightly further up. You might want to grade slightly lower down, depending on your body shape. I know that for me, this kind of line has worked for me in the past when I've grayed. So I think this will be absolutely fine for me. OK, so now that I've done that, I'm going to put you on a bit of a time lapse. You can see me trace out all the other bits, get it all cut out, and then I'll come back to you. So that is all of my pattern pieces cut out. So it was only the back piece that I needed to grade out to the size 16. All the other pieces I've cut out as a size 14. And now I can cut out my fabric. Now the only piece which I don't need to cut out of the fabric is the buttonhole guide. So I've made sure that I've kept that completely separate and then I can use that later on. So I'm gonna pop that up there. So the fabric that I've got, this um, is a cotton lawn and this is from Felicity Fabrics. Now Felicity Fabrics have given this to me for free in exchange for a review of whatever pattern I make out of it. So you guys picked this pattern to be the sew along, so you're getting the full review for it. So thank you very much Felicity Fabrics for giving this to me. I have to say, even though this was given to me for free, this is an amazing quality cotton. It's really, really soft. I don't think I've had a cotton this soft that I can even remember. Even like some of my um, like Liberty um, Tana lawns, they're really soft and silky, but this is just, it's just a bit different. And I don't know if it's gonna come across on screen, kind of how, soft and floaty it is like the drape on this is really really nice so if you can just see how soft that is it's not like a really crisp cotton it's got quite a nice soft flowy drape to it and um, it's not see-through as well so that is good but it's really really lightweight so I'm I have to admit I'm really surprised how nice this actually was when I got it. Uh, I mean, the bunnies on there is just, well, absolutely adorable. No wonder I picked this, hey? <laughs> it's so cute. Okay, so I've got um, a metre and a half of this fabric because the fabric requirements on here does say that for my size, so even if I was to be a 16, but for a 14, it does say one and a half metres for a wide fabric. So if you had a narrow fabric, so if it was about 115, you probably need between 1.9 and 2.1. Um, and uh, this is a wide 
cotton so I should have enough for that. Okay, so I'm going to get this laid out, get all those pattern pieces cut, and then I will come back to you once I've done that. So I have cut out all of my pattern pieces and also the interfacing for the collar, the front facing and the sleeve bands. Now one thing about the sleeve band is, I'm not sure if you might have seen from the fast forwarding, I had to refer to the instructions a little bit because I was getting a little bit confused with the grain line on this. So it was saying that the um, grain line, if you can see, is this way. So that meant when I had my fabric out, the grain line, if I just grab a piece of fabric. So just to kind of explain, so the print on this is going in this direction. So the selvage is up here um, and down there. So the grain line would be going across. Now, if I put my pattern piece across, which is the grain line there, matching the grain line um, of the salvage here, that would mean that my bunny rabbits, you can see, would be going in the wrong direction because when you're putting the sleeve piece on, you're wearing it this way. So I actually had to have a look at the instructions and then actually looked at the picture and then it made perfect sense. If you can see from the picture, you can see, uh, well, if you can, that the sleeve pieces are actually going in a different direction to the main shirt. Now that's lovely if you've got a stripe design, but not if you've got bunnies. <laughs> so I did actually um, cut this the wrong direction. So I did actually do it um, the uh, opposite side of the grain. So that means that my bunnies will be facing the right way on my sleeve pieces. So I hope that makes sense, but I just thought I'd mention it just in case anyone else has a um, print like this where it is directional and you don't wanna have, I mean, if you've got stripes, 
brilliant but if you don't have stripes then that um, sleeve band piece you probably want to turn the other way around okay right let me grab the instructions and I'll see what the first step is okay so the first step is to stay stitch the neckline on the front piece and then also do the darts I'm going to grab my pattern piece here so it's asking you to stay stitch this part of the neckline so just do some stitching within the seam allowance to make sure that doesn't stretch out and then you can see on here my dart so my bust dart here and my waist dart here so what I'm going to do is get those marked on the reverse of the fabric get those all pinned and sewn up sewing in of the darts and um, as you can see there so the, you've got the bust dart and then the waist dart which is kind of like a fisheye dart so with the bust darts um, what I do is I start off with a uh, standard stitch length and then when I get to near the peak of the dart I do decrease my stitch length and then don't back stitch at the end I leave some tails and then I tie them um, together that's my method and then with the fisheye darts what I do is I don't sew it you know kind of top to bottom or bottom to top I actually start in the middle and then I stitch one way down and then turn it round and then stitch the other way around just because I find that you get the cleanest finish that way so now what I need to do is press those darts so the instructions should tell me which side I need to press them to Okay, yes, so I need to press the um, bust dart down towards the bottom and then this fisheye dart towards the centre. So that means that one goes that way. So I'll do that on both of those and then I will come back and have a look at the next instruction. So those are my darts nicely pressed there as well. I do use a tailor's ham just to get a nice shape on there. So if you uh, don't have a tailor's ham, uh, if you do sew a lot um, of darts in your garments, then uh, yeah, it's probably worth getting one of those. Okay, so next step we have, okay, so we're doing view A, so we're gonna skip a couple of steps because this is for view C and go on to uh, step four, which is back to for all views, which is stay stitch the back neck edge and make the darts the same as the front. So now we're gonna grab our back piece. So this piece is on the fold. So you will see there that there are again, some darts for the waist. So that's gonna be on both sides to the back. So we're gonna be stay stitching the neckline here and then of course you've got the two darts that sit one there 
um, one there. So I'll get tracing those darts and I'll come back to you once I've done that. So that's the back piece done. I've uh, done the darts and I've also gone out and pressed them towards the center, just like the front pieces. So if we have a look at the instructions now, we've now got stitch the front to the back at the shoulder seams and stitch front to back at side seams. So that back piece that we've just done, so we're just gonna lie that down flat grab our two front pieces and we're going to line those up at the shoulders so one there and one there okay and then as per the instructions we're going to sew along the shoulder seams and then once we've done that then sew along the side seams have a bodice I'll show you that there so yeah looking nice now one thing the instructions don't say um, is how to finish your seams or even tell you to finish your seams which is a little bit of a pet hate of mine I wish instructions told you when to finish seams because sometimes I've had it before where they haven't mentioned this uh, finishing off the seams and I've done it and then found at a later stage, oh, I should have actually finished the seams in a slightly different way. Or I've done it where I haven't finished the seams and then realised I'm then too late to finish them in a nice, clean way. So I've had a quick browse through and um, yeah, I can't see them mentioning anywhere about finishing these seams. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just overlock the edges of these just to give a nice finish and then the next step is moving on to the collar <laughs> okay so I'll do that and come back okay so I've uh, done the overlocking just to finish off those um, side seams and shoulder seams just to make it a little bit neater and now we are on to the collar so first things first is to actually apply the interfacing to the neckband piece and the collar piece. So I'm going to go and do that now and then come back. So those bits are interfaced now. And looking at the instructions, we're just um, going to have the collar piece for the time being. So we need the bit that we have just interfaced and also the bit that isn't interfaced. And what it looks like on the instructions is that you put both right sides together and then we're going to sew all the way around these three edges and we're leaving this bit open. It's just those bits that we're going to be sewing across. So I'll do that now. all sewn together now. Um, I've now got to just trim it, make sure that I trim the corners as well and then turn it the right way out 
and give it a good press. So I'm going to trim the edges and when it comes to these corners, I'm just going to cut straight along there so that uh, hopefully we'll get a clean point. So um, when I go to press it, I will use a point turner as well to see if I can get those uh, points nice and clean. OK, there we go. So I've trimmed the seams and that's what I mean about just cutting off that point on there. And uh, <laughs> Bentley's joined me <laughs> again. If you could hear him and now it's just a case of turning this the right way out i need to find my point turner somewhere but turn that the right way out and then we're going to go to the iron and give that a good press okay once i've done that i'll come back that's the collar now pressed with some reasonably pointy uh, ends <laughs> on that. And the instructions now say to baste stitch. So just a stitch along this raw edge, just to keep it all in place. And then also top stitch around those three corners. Uh, so I'm gonna do that as well, and then I'll come back. stitching is done. Now I did struggle a little bit with these corners because when I was getting to them, when I then um, put the needle down and then turned to then sew down the other side, it wouldn't move. So what I did is um, when I sewed, I sewed up here first and then I couldn't get down this section because I couldn't kind of get past that point. So what I did is I actually started um, on the other side for about here and then went back to that point and then finished and then started here again, went all the way down to this point, stopped there and then I sewed from here upwards. So it just meant that I didn't get kind of stuck at those points. So I hope that kind of makes sense. You can probably see, maybe, you see where my bit was there where I kind of went that way and then carried on going this way. I don't know if you can see that there, but when you're wearing the shirt, I'm pretty sure you're not going to see anything. Okay, so that is that bit done. Let's have a look and see what's next. Okay, so I think we're on to probably the most complicated bit, which is attaching, I think, the collar and the neckband piece. I always struggle a little bit with these whenever I've come across them in the past. I think I might understand what I need to do, but I'm kind of hoping I am anyway. So it's asking you to um, put your collar piece with your neckband piece, and it's to find out, identify which bit is the one that has the interfacing on. So for the collar piece, I've just, on this raw edge, I'm just kind of having a look, uh, opening up that to see which bit has the interfacing on. And the bit that has the interfacing on is this side. So this side, I'm going to make sure that's the side that I'm placing down on top of the neckband. Now the neckband, this piece is the one that's got the interfacing on as well, because later on it talks about the neckband facing piece, which I believe is the bit without the interfacing on, I think. <laughs> so I've got my neckband piece with the interfacing and that's facing towards me. I've then got my collar, and this is the bit that's got the interfacing on the inside. And I'm putting that together on top of there. Now there are some little um, double notches that you can line up. And I think ultimately, you just have to make sure that you've got an even amount, let me move that out slightly, <laughs> an even amount either side. Now, when I have uh, done this before, I've worked out that it's 1.5 centimetres along this bottom edge. Now, that makes sense because the seam allowance in this is 1.5 centimetres. So, 
I think if I line that all up and make sure that I've definitely got 1.5 centimeters on this little overhang edge. So if I could bring that a little bit closer. So you see there, so this section here is what I'm talking about. This being 1.5 centimeters this side and also 1.5 centimeters, uh, obviously when that was lined up, um, that side as well. That's what I'm going for anyway. <laughs> so I'm gonna line those up and then it just says to baste it. So I've already got like a basting stitch on the main collar piece that I can follow to attach both of those. So I think that's right, we'll see. <laughs> Okay, so I think that's right. I've now got that lined up. So that's what it looks like from the outside and from the inside. You can kind of see a sort of collar sort of shape. <laughs> so now I think we're gonna pop that to one side and we want our neckband piece that doesn't have the interfacing on. And from reading the instructions, it looks like, I'm gonna show you the pattern piece on here. There are some single notches here, which are on the fabric. And it's saying it wants you to machine stitch um, five eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimeters down this edge. So where this single notch is, I think it's asking you to sew all the way down here, almost like a kind of a stay stitching from there and then the same with this notch again all the way up to this corner so you're just leaving this center piece here unstitched that's what i think it means so i'm going to do that so i'm going to sew all the way down here all the way up there at five eighths of an inch and then i'll come back i'm hoping you'll be able to see this uh you might not be able to because it's obviously white thread um but i have stitched along there but then not stitched in between can you see where these two notches are so i haven't stitched in between there but i have done all the way along the bottom here so i've done that the next step is saying um so yeah sorry the next step is saying clip notched edge of neck band facing to stitching at small dots so again, this is how I interpret it. I mean, these instructions, they're not really, really clear in my mind, but I think this is what it's asking. So again, I'll show you the pattern piece. Here is the pattern piece. I forgot I didn't actually make um, my notches on uh, this side of the pattern piece. So I've just done that now. Um, so yeah, sorry, these um, dots, these little small dots at the bottom, these ones here, so I've marked that on my fabric. You may be able to see some pink dots. Can you see a pink dot there and a pink dot over there as well? So I think at those pink dots there, I think what it is is we've just got to clip into those up to that stay stitching. So if I grab my scissors, I think it's just a case of clipping up to there and up to there so I see if I can sorry it's probably not the best angle to show you but if you can see my pink dot and then you can see now I've clipped up to that pink dot and the same on this side my pink dot and I've clipped up to that as well but not gone past where I've stitched and now it's saying to fold over five eighths of an inch up and then press. So again, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but in between those two dots, I'm gonna press that section like so. So I think that's it. And then it says to trim it afterwards. So I'll come back to you once I've done that. So that's it there. And you see there, I've just turned that up. And it's quite easy to see what the five eighths of an inch is, is because you've already made some of those markings. So now it says to trim this uh, bit that we've just folded over 
to just a quarter of an inch. Don't know if you'll be able to see much difference there, but there we go. I've trimmed that and I've just eyeballed that. Oh yeah, no point measuring it. <laughs> okay, right. Next step is I've got to attach this neckband piece to the neckband piece uh, that's already attached to the collar. So it's saying with right sides together, pin the neckband facing to the neckband over collar matching centers. So, mm, let me think about that again. Okay, I think I've got it. So it's saying, so this piece here, where I've got those little ends sticking out. You're gonna lay that towards you. And then this new piece that you've done, the right side is gonna to go to the right side of that. So you are effectively sandwiching this collar piece in between. So can you see, there's the collar piece. This is the bit that we've just folded that bit under. And then on the other side is that neckband piece with the interfacing. So I hope that makes sense. So now it's saying to stitch all the way around this top, which would make sense because we've left that 1.5 uh, centimetre seam allowance around there. So in theory, it should sit nice and flush. Okay, I think I've got it. Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to sew along there and then come back to you. That's all sewn together now, all around those edges. So now I'm just going to trim the seam allowances, clip into the curves and then I'll go through the next step. Okay, that's that now trimmed and all these curves are clipped. So now it's saying to turn it the right way out and then give it a nice press. So I'll do that. I turn the main light on because it's getting a bit dark now. So um, yeah, I'm gonna probably leave it um, for the day soon. But I'm just gonna finish this last bit so I've pressed that now and it's saying for you to baste stitch um, these sections at the ends here. So um, where that gap is, you just leave that as it is and just baste stitch these two ends here. So I'll just do that quickly. So that's those basted. So we can see here that these bits are now basted. So there's just this little gap here. I hope you can see that okay. So the next uh, bit is to actually attach the collar or baste it onto the bodice. So it's saying if you grab your bodice and you want to have this neck piece, you can see that there are two notches on the neck. If I turn that around, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see, but I've got a little notch just there and a little notch just there, those two. So what you want to do is you want to line up your collar onto that neck piece. Now it's saying that you need to trim um, or clip into the stay stitching. So we did do some stay stitching earlier on. I don't know if you'll be able to see my stay stitching there, but I'm just going to clip into some of the curves on there but I want to make sure that I remember which ones these little notches are so I might just make a little marking with my pink um, chalk pen just so that I know so that when I line everything up it's going to match. So I'm just going to go and clip into the curves and then start getting everything lined up. So I've made some little clips around the um, the whole part of the top neckline of the bodice up to where I was doing the stay stitching. So I've just done a few clips in there. And now I'm going to baste uh, the collar onto the bodice. So you've got your bodice here, you're going to lie that down in front of you there. And then you're going to grab your collar 
And so you've got uh, two sides of it. You've got the side where you've got the folded piece and then the bit where you don't have the folded piece. You want that bit to go right sides together and you want to match up those two notches. So I'm just going to match those ones up there and pin those in place. There we go. And then I'm just going to pin the rest of this section around the collar. Okay, so I've pinned all of that in place. So there is a little bit of easing, I think, uh, in there. But you can see, well, I hope you can see. So I've got my collar piece here, and then I've attached that now to the bodice. And you've still got this little opening section here. So now it's saying to base stitch all the way up to where that opening is and then continue base stitching but just make sure you're not catching this section. So you just carry on going down in the middle there and then carry on basting across to the other end. So I hope that makes sense. So you baste all the way along but you're just making sure you're not catching this section you just want to make sure it's this bit so hope that makes sense i'm going to do that now so now that's base stitched all into place so hopefully this will uh, make sense a bit more now so we can see that that collar is attached to the bodice now you can see there but we've still got that opening there but apart from that everything else is kind of basted to it so yeah looking good so i think on that note i'm going to leave it there for today and i will catch up with you tomorrow to continue on okay see you tomorrow hi everyone welcome to day two so i um last left you where i had just inserted the collar so i basted this in place so it's looking nice I think so far um, so the next step is these front facing pieces so I need to interface those first so I'm just going to pop out and give those um, an iron on and then I'll come back okay so I've got the interfacing on these uh, front facing pieces and the next thing it's saying is to machine stitch half an inch from the neck edge of the facing. So I believe that is this bit. So I'm going to stitch half an inch around this curve. And then once I've done that, it then actually does say to finish um, the edges. They call it edge finish, but I looked it up in the instructions and that basically means finish your seams um, or the edge of the, the raw edge. Um, so it says to edge finish along the unnotched edge and shoulder edge of the facing. So that is this side. So this is where we're gonna be doing our machine stitching along this curve. And then I'm gonna be using the overlocker to finish off the raw edge, which would be across the top here and then all the way down here. So just those two sides, so along the top and then all the way down. So I'll do that on both pieces and then come back to you. There we go. So. I've done the stitching down here and then I've overlocked this edge as well. Okay, and then the next step it's asking you to do is actually to snip into uh, this corner here up to the stitching lines. So I'm just going to grab my scissors and cut a few snips into there. So just up to the stitching line, because 
I think we're going to have to try and fit that on a curve. So give us maybe a little bit of movement. Okay, so I've done about four snips into that curve. And now I think it's saying about actually attaching these pieces to the bodice. So let me just work that bit out and then I'll come back. <laughs> okay, so we've got our bodice. And I think what we need to do is let's start on this side. So I'm gonna lie this side just on the table on there. So you've got the collar piece up here and then the bodice bit here. I'm going to, this collar piece, I'm going to pull towards me out the way and expose those raw edges. So if you can see like that, so the collar I've just come towards me on there. So up here we've got the neckband piece which we folded over, so that's sitting at the top. So then we grab our corresponding facing piece and what we're going to do is line that up. So it's starting at the bottom and then lining all the way up there and then where we've clipped in this curve section is going to go up to where this neck band piece is where we fold it over. I'll get pinning and then I can hopefully do some, uh, some close ups for you. Oh, you've woken up, have you? Okay, so hopefully this will show it a little bit better. So I've pinned this facing piece from the bottom and then lined it all the way up with the shirt. And then this is that collar piece. So I've lined it up here. This is the bit where we snipped into. So this bit initially was going around this way, but you've had to manipulate it to fit round this way instead. So you can see here underneath, this is that neck band piece with that bit that we folded over. And then this is the collar. So as you can see there, I've pinned it all the way up to that line for where that meets. So this bit on the sewing machine, I think you're just gonna have to be really careful to kind of really ease it in around that corner when we're basting. So I'll do that now and then show you what it looks like afterwards. Okay, I've basted that into place and I'm pretty happy with how that went in. I don't have any puckers or anything, so that is good on uh, both sides so just check you don't have any puckers or anything either side otherwise that's going to affect when you turn it out so very happy with that so now what i need to do is do exactly the same on the other side of the shirt and then i believe once that's basted in once i'm happy i can then sew it in for real so i'll get the other side done and then i'll come back to you so we have both sides done now both are basted in place and I've checked and just to make sure there's no puckers anywhere. On the other side, I did have to unpick it after I did my first round of basting as I did catch a little bit. So just make sure that you unpick and redo it where needed. So yeah, I think I'm happy with that. So now what we've got to do is uh, actually secure it all in place because we've only basted these facing pieces in and the neck band as well. When we attached it to the bodice, we only again basted it in. So now I'm gonna go around the whole thing from one end all the way around, past the neck band, all the way down to this side and get that all secured in place. And that's using a standard stitch length and that's gonna be all at five eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimeters. Okay, I'm going to do that and then I'll come back to you and go through the next step. Right, 
is all done. So all of it is now stitched with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance or with a standard stitch length. Just make sure that you still keep that neckband piece that we folded over. Just make sure that bit is still open and free so you don't sew across that. So I think I was sewing it, I think I caught a tiny bit, I was like a tiny little pucker, so I did actually unpick that and then re-sew it. So I'm really happy with that now. So the instructions now say to trim the seam allowances and the corners, clip the curves. So I'll do that all along these edges now. And then uh, we are on the second page of the instructions after that. Right, I've clipped all of my seams. And uh, now the next step is to basically turn everything all to the inside and try and neaten it up on that neckband piece and then attach the facing to the shoulders. So again, I'll try and show you as best I can on there. So you can see here, this is the neck piece which is open. So those seam allowances there need to be up. And then it's just a case of lying that flat and then sewing that down. Now I'm gonna hand sew that in place. I mean, I think you could stitch in the ditch on the reverse, but I don't think I will. I think I'm just gonna hand sew it. And then you see these bits here, these bits have to line up with the shoulder seams and you can hand tack it there as well so it stays on the inside. So I hope that shows it well enough. So I'm gonna do a little bit of hand sewing, get that all in place, and then I'll come back and we'll go through the next step. sewing is done so I've done that neckband piece and then those facing bits I've attached to the shoulder seams so I hope you can see that there now what I'm going to do is give it a really nice press and then I will move on to the next bit okay so the shirt has been pressed and it's just now sitting on my mannequin next step is the sleeves so the instructions say to uh, slightly gather the head of the sleeve. So this section here, you might be able to see on the pattern piece there, it says to do between the notches. So we've got a little double notch here and a single notch here. So I'm gonna do two lines of gathering stitches. I don't think it's a, a big kind of gather or anything. I think it's more of a case of easing it in a little bit. So I'll do that. And then once I've done that gathering, then it would just be a case of uh, right sides together on the sleeve and then sewing down underneath. Both sleeves done so you can see there we've just got a um, slight shaping there so we're ready to insert that now again they haven't said anything about finishing this raw edge so I'm going to put um, that through the overlocker just to get that neatened up so I'll do that 
And then the next step is actually about the sleeve bands. So it wants us to apply the interfacing. So here are my sleeve bands. So I'm going to attach um, my interfacing to two of those pieces and then I'll come back and we'll go on to the next step. So that's those pieces uh, having the interface ironed on. And then now we're doing the pieces that don't have the interfacing on. I'm gonna lie those over the top. So this is my interfaced piece, right side up. And this is the non-interface piece, right side down. And then what we're going to do is sew along these two edges and along the bottom. So this bit we're leaving open. So it's just those three sides. And then the same with the other one, exactly the same. Right sides together and just sewing those three edges. those all sewn up so now I'm just going to trim the seam allowances and um, cut off those corners so I can get some sharp points so I'll just do that now now these are trimmed down and uh, cut off those corners and then just going to turn them the right way out and give them a press so I'll do that and then come back. Both sleeve cuffs have been pressed now so they look nice and uh, yeah use my point turner to try and get those points looking at their best. So now the instructions are saying to baste the bottom so that bit which is raw we want to baste that and then it is saying to top stitch all around those three corners. So I'll do that. So that's the cuff piece top stitched and basted at the bottom. Don't know if you can see that there. And next step is to then attach these cuffs onto the sleeve. So on the pattern piece, there is a circle at the bottom, if you can see that there. Now that's just marking the center point of the sleeve. So I have to admit, I forgot to put the circle on, but I know that it's the center point. So this is my um, overlocked edge of my sleeve and then this edge is the center point. So I'm just gonna make a little dot there. And then what it's asking is on the outside, so if I turn my sleeve, on the outside, you want to bring in those edges to that center point and then stitch that in place. So I hope that makes sense there. So just to that dot that I'm gonna make and then stitch it all the way around. sleeve cuffs are done and you can see that there that is the split in the cuff I really like that I think that looks really really nice so in the instructions it does say to press the band out pressing seam allowance towards the sleeve and on the outside top stitch 
Now, to me, that means that this edge, ooh, if I can turn it the right way, <laughs> uh, so it means this edge is still not finished. So I'm going to overlock this uh, raw edge first before I top stitch. So I'm going to overlock all of that. And then when I top stitch, then the top stitching will be just underneath this line. So I'll be catching the seam allowance in there as well. And I'll be top stitching all the way around. So I'll get on and do that and then I'll come back. stitching on here. Now I found this really difficult because it says to top stitch on the outside so that you can you know obviously get a nice even look because if you do it from the inside you know it might not necessarily look that even but my machine even if I take this section off the sleeve won't actually go over so I couldn't do that. I did try doing it that way as well to see. But yeah, because I, I couldn't get my sleeve over to kind of feed it round, then I had to do it like a really awkward way. But hey-ho, it's done. Um, I don't know if I was to make it again, whether I would bother with that top stitching because I couldn't get it all the way around. But yeah, it'll be okay. Okay, so now comes uh, actually attaching the sleeve to the bodice. So I've got the bodice here inside out. And then what I'm going to do is get my sleeve that is the right side out. And what I'm going to do is feed that through. And then line all of that up with some pins and then adjusting any of my gathers so that it fits nicely and then once that's all pinned I will come back to you. So you can see here where I've eased in the sleeve so there is barely any kind of gathering or anything on there it's just literally just to make it kind of fit in there. So uh, the instructions say to base stitch it first and then if you're happy then go ahead and do the standard stitching I don't think I need to base stitch because I very rarely based my um, sleeves in. I can normally just go straight ahead and do normal stitching. So I'm going to do that. And then because of the raw edge, I'm then going to go and put it through the overlocker as well. So I'm going to do that on both sides and then I'll come back to you. And then it's just the last few steps, I think. sleeves are in <laughs> so looking nice now we need to move on to the hem so let's have a look and see how it says to finish that okay so it's saying for the facing piece so on the edge so the front the facing piece that we had uh, kind of pressed behind we want to bring that back out and this time we actually want to put it back on itself. So right sides together, like so. 
and then you're going to stitch um, 1.5 centimeters or 5 eighths of an inch from the edge and then trim off that little bit there so that then what you do is you kind of turn it back in on itself and then you get like a nice clean finish. So I'll get that stitched and cut and then I'll show you what it looks like. So I've done that and if you can see there that is where I have stitched along that section. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut this bit off. So just like a little rectangle off. Uh, you don't want to cut uh, too far this way because you're going to have to turn it back in but just cut like a sort of triangle uh, triangle <laughs> rectangle shape and um, I'll show you what I mean. There we go so there's that chunk taken out there so now if I turn this back in on itself you can then see that you've got your point there and almost like a guide of the hem on that so it does say that you can um, double fold it up which is probably what I'm going to do just to have a narrow hem so I'll do that all the way around and then also on the other side make sure that I repeat that uh, to get a nice clean corner narrow hem done there it does look a bit wavy because I do need to give it a good press but um, yeah nice little narrow hem there okay so the next thing we need to do is actually top stitch the um, front facing down so it's recommending to um, sew an inch in and all the way up up to the neckband piece. So I'm going to do that on both sides. So do an inch all that way there and that will kind of become what looks a little bit like the button placket. And then it's buttonholes and buttons. And then I think we're done. <laughs> Okay, so that is now all top stitched down. Sorry if the light's not great. We're getting to that time of day where the uh, sun is uh, coming around. Okay, so now we are on to the buttonholes. So I'm getting my buttonhole guide and I'm gonna line that up on there. I'm gonna make a mark and then I'm gonna try it on and just make sure that I'm happy with what they recommend as being the buttonhole placements because I just want to make sure that I've got a button definitely covering the boob area. Um, I don't want any gaps or anything. So I'm going to lie that up against it, make some markings, check that I'm happy and get some buttonholes done. <laughs> So I've just done a quick check of where the buttonholes are just by putting some pins in and I have to say I'm actually really happy with the uh, with the placement of the buttonholes. Now the buttons that I'm using I've got some vintage ones here just some blue ones I thought they'd look quite nice against this and I have to say I really like the way this shirt is looking actually so yeah I'm going to get those fully marked get the buttonholes done and sew in the buttonholes and then I will come back to you.
there we go. It is finished with all the buttons and buttonholes done. I'm actually really happy with the uh, navy blue. I think that looks really nice with it. And overall, I think the shirt is lovely. I think it's a lovely fit. I'll give you uh, more twirls in a minute. But I have to admit, I think I was pleasantly surprised with this. It does say that it is an easy pattern. Now I did get a tiny bit confused maybe with the collar section, but I managed to work it out and I didn't have to do loads of unpicking or anything like that. So do you know what, actually I'd probably say this one is probably easy if you know, you've done a little bit of sewing before and you kind of understand some terms and things. I really like the fit of it. I am glad that I did do the 14 and then grade out to the 16. The bust is probably, it's it's loose, but it's not kind of baggy. So I do like that. And I do think it still has a nice shape with the grading out. I think it's a nice length. I think, I mean, I'm just wearing it with some jeans at the moment. And I love these little cuffs. They're just really straightforward and simple but I think they're quite effective. And of course, this fabric is just adorable. I love these bunnies <laughs> and I don't think it looks too novelty or childish or anything like that. I actually really think it looks really smart. Absolute joy to work with this cotton. It's so incredibly soft and I just think it's gonna be so comfortable to wear. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you did, give me a thumbs up. That would be really nice. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, then please do. Okay, I will insert some little twirls and things before I lose the light. And I'll speak to you all in my next video. Take care. Bye.